Welcome back to Free Media. I'm Amber Duke. And I'm Robbie Suave. Well, should women be registered for the national draft? HBO host Bill Maher and former Democratic Representative Tulsi Gabbard recently debated this issue with Gabbard saying she thinks there shouldn't be a draft at all. Let's watch. And if something was so catastrophic that we did have to draft people, why shouldn't women go? But why bring it up in an election year are my two questions. Uh, well, first of all, we, we shouldn't have a draft. At uh, all? And, uh, no, I don't think so. What the if it's an emergency? Well, the fact, that, the fact that they're bringing this up now, to me, points to the fact that uh, the only reason we would need a draft is because our warmongering politicians are starting wars that they know the American people aren't going to support. So this issue is coming up because of the National Defense Authorization Act needs uh, renewal, and Senate Democrats were looking at uh, inserting a proposal to automatically register women for the draft. Uh, what do you think about this idea? Should women be registered for the draft? Well, I agree with Tulsi Gabbard, first of all, that there shouldn't be a draft. Um, she, I do too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she raises an important point about um, the fact that if a war is viewed as just by the American people, they will sign up to support it. We saw this after 9-11, of course, where a lot of young men were flocking to the armed services because they thought that it was the right time to serve their country. Um, now we fight a lot of proxy wars and regime change wars that I think it's understandable for the American people, especially the working class who, you know, joins the military for a lot of reasons, even outside of just serving the country um, to, to not want to participate in. Um, but there's also a question of military readiness, which I think she got to later in the interview, where um, she said, you don't want people there who don't want to be there um, because they're going to drag down the readiness and the ability of these troops to actually do their job. Um, on the question of women joining the draft, the immediate issue that comes to mind for me is that uh, you would essentially have to lower the standards of the uh, of boot camp or the initial training period for women to even qualify to join the service um, because of the physiological differences between men and women. So it would really, if you're in an emergency situation like Bill Maher's suggesting and you need to recruit a bunch of people to the service very, very quickly, having women in the draft would slow down that process considerably and create an effectively a log jam because you're gonna be bringing in all of these people, 90% of whom won't even qualify. Yeah, I, I think uh, Tulsi, who is a veteran and I served, I think, three tours uh, in various places in the Middle East, um, yeah, made a lot of excellent points there. You hit on some of them. Um, Ayn Rand, uh, the philosopher who's near and dear to the hearts of many of our uh, readers and viewers at Reason Magazine, uh, was famously vehemently against the draft and made many of these same points, saying that uh, a just cause, uh, a just military cause, has never lacked for volunteers. Um, you know, Right after 9-11, going back to World War II, after uh, Pearl Harbor was attacked, so many uh, young men signed up. My grandfather signed up after Pearl Harbor, served in the South Pacific. Um, it, the, the lack of a draft is a good check on on warmongering, on unjust military uh, initiation. Uh, n nations defending themselves uh, often enjoy robust su voluntary support from people in, in those situations. So it's a good check on tyranny um, itself. Uh, governments are more likely to wage uh, offensive war if they can automatically draw on a supply of, uh, of soldiers. And, um, and there's, I, there's no way around it that I think, and Ayn Rand thought that it is like forcing someone to go do military service to put themselves potentially in risk of dying is is indentured servitude. It, like it, it just is. If if the government has that power, if it can make you go sacrifice your life, like what power does it not have? And and so I would argue, even though the Supreme Court doesn't agree with this, that it is just it is prohibited under our constitutional provision prohibiting slavery, essentially. It's also telling that um, the people who would support a draft either for just men or for both men and women um, are, of course, the people who are not going to be subjected to it any longer because they're all too old. And for sure, that comes with national service. They all want, oh, yeah, the problem with young people right now is that they didn't have to do compulsory national service. I'm like, yeah, it's always invariably old people suggesting that. Right. Well, and also, I mean, their kids are going to be going to school or whatever it is at elite colleges, yeah. doing whatever it is that they do. They'll, of course, find ways to get out of actually being drafted where it would be mostly working class and poor Americans who actually have to go through with the compulsory service requirement, um, which is uh, 
a, I mean, yeah. no, that's kind of a progressive way of looking at it, but I think it's reasonable to bring up if the people who are going sure. to oh, implement no, sure. policy are not subjected to it or their family's not subjected to it, they're not feeling the actual real pain of this policy that they're putting in place. And our entitlement system is also a ma already a massive transfer of wealth from younger people to older people. Our, the protections we have via Social Security, which people paying into now are never going to be able to take advantage of. Um, so, and that on, on top of that, you, you the elder statesmen, the, the older policymakers are also saying that young people should be required to serve their country in all these various ways, including in pain of losing life and limb. It just seems like, what more do you want from the next generation? You've already bankrupted us. Um, it seems very unfair to me. Yeah, on the question of women serving or yeah. being drafted, I, I think the other argument that I would bring up against that move is that we sort of value in society the idea of protecting women and children. And so to deliberately send women off to fight wars that they will likely die in, I think is sort of perverse to who we consider innocence uh, in just our natural conception of societal, uh, the makeup of our society. And I find it kind of troubling that there have been some people on the right who have supported this because they say, well, the feminists for years have been clamoring for equality. And so now we're gonna show them what equality really looks like. And it's like, okay, so you're gonna punish all women for a very vocal minority subset who uh, have gone too far with third wave feminism by sending them to die in a war. Like that seems a little bit of an overreaction. And if you're, um, if your plan for uh, politics and society is that you want to encourage family making and homemaking and women to stay home or have put family first over careers, then uh, requiring them to register for the draft is not the way to do that. Um, so it just yeah. seems kind of backwards and more like a retribution type policy than one that actually is in keeping with what they purport their principles to be. I would say uh, if the standards, without um, lowering the standards, if they can be met by, uh, you're right that due to the differences, body differences between men and women, um, there will be many fewer women who can pass whatever those qualifications are. If there are some exceptional athletic women who can pass the standards and are interested in military service, I certainly wouldn't prohibit them. Um, I, I just offer choices to people. Different people want different things in life. Um, I, I, I think it's it's fine. There are also non-combat uh, military related roles that anyone can and should be able to serve into, you know, uh, uh, medical needs in the military community, other roles that actually women have traditionally taken. That all sounds uh, fine to me, but yes, a policy of just from a government standpoint saying there are absolutely no differences here. I mean, it's overridden by the fact that there should just be no draft anyway. Exactly. Um, but uh, I would certainly let them uh, serve if they could, you know, without dumbing down the standards right. or saying we need to kind of like DEI this away or something. But uh, that would be my approach. I agree. If you can do the 50 push-ups and yeah. run the however many miles and the time limit, then yeah. go ahead. I'm out. Go girl. <laughs> yeah. Hate push-ups. <laughs> do your thing, girl boss. <laughs> All right. We'll have more free media in just a minute.